Good morning. What a beautiful day. Call the word today is from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our call to worship song today as we bow down. I'm not leading. <laughs> I want to welcome you all this morning. I want to welcome Bill Buck back. Great to see you. We can't wait for your message. Any announcements we need to make? This Wednesday night at 6.30, working on the church float. Back here? Is the air conditioning in there? <laughs> There's a lot of announcements here about Honey Days, about uh, bringing some baked goods and stuff to sell. And pickerel, I don't know if anybody going up to pickerel at all this week. This is July 10th through the 15th. Am I wrong? They would have had to have been signed up already, so. And I see. What? I've been there. I didn't have to stay overnight, but I've been there. They have a lot of fun, though. They go out to the lake and cool off. Um, I see pastor thanked all the men working on the deck and I didn't know he had to build a deck to make it rain. So that's the way it works. Next, next Sunday will be, I'm looking, Pastor Stephen Kyle, Cable of Wild, Cavill? Quali. That's why I don't read this stuff. And I was looking on, I was looking, thinking about pasture, and I looked up on the weather, my weather deal, and it's like 63, 64 for highs there. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Only 50s at night, so. Yeah, I see it. Uh, sunset's 11.32 p.m. <laughs> He's getting a lot done. <clears throat> Any prayer requests?
If we keep going around and Megan left, the BGF team was suffering from COVID symptoms, the whole entire team. So that they're ready to go for this to the break with their strings and break to the little ones that they'll be ministering to that may not have ever heard any of the Bible or the gospel message. <laughs> Shall we pray? Father God, we pray for healing, strength, and comfort for all those on our healing list. We pray for those in retirement homes and assisted living. Just come alongside them and lift all them up and give them comfort and healing. Pray for our military service men and women. Pray for our local government that they do good stuff for us through you. Pray for our church family. And we pray for Pastor Ron and Megan up in Alaska and all the VBS people that are going out to spread the word for you. And may their light shine in them. And may you increase our kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand for the confession of sin if you're able? <clears throat> Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us to knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end by your grace, we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Declaration of Grace today is John 3, 16 and 17 verses. For God's love the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent not the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through him. You may be seated. Opening him, he, he, he hitteth me my soul. 571.
The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 6 through 12, found in your Pew Bible on page 734. I will begin the Old Testament reading from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6. Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? It is not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. The epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 18 through 23, found in your Pew Bible on page 1122. I'll begin the epistle reading from Romans chapter 8 at verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. This is the word of God. Would you please stand for the gospel lesson, if you're able? Luke 6, chapter 6, verses 36 through 42, found in your pew Bible at 1025. Luke chapter 6, starting at verse 36. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. On judging others, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. For with the measure you will use it will be measured back to you. He also told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? They will not both fall into the pit. Will they not both fall into the pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the long log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will be will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. Here ends the gospel reading. Shall we say the confession of faith, the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born to the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated when we do the offertorium, kids. The sermon hymn today, I Serve the Risen Savior, 527.
back with you again. This is Mike on. Testing. There you go. Yeah, good to be back with you again. Uh, it's just a, a privilege as Linda and I have, have traveled a little bit this, this summer to congregations where the pastor has been, been gone or on vacation or maybe there's been a sickness within there, but uh, it's really been good to be with uh, people that we've never been with before and make friends, but most of all, sharing the love of Jesus. And that's, that's our mission. Linda's my mission is go ye therefore. And uh, as I was, uh, Pastor Ron called me here oh, a month or so ago and asked me if I could fill in. I said, sure, I'd, I'd love to do that. And so, of course, uh, some people ask me, well, where do you get the, a message from? Well, first of all, you get it from God. You get it through his word, studying through uh, devotional time. Uh, there's a, a pastor's directory that has a, a prick of bee within it, and, and they suggest that the date, uh, you know, they have the Old Testament, New Testament, and then they have the gospel and maybe preach out of one of those. <laughs> well, that won't be this Sunday. Linda and I joined a Great Life here a month ago, and I was down working out a couple of weeks ago, and I was on one of the machines, and I was looking at the reading, if you do this, this will strengthen this part of your body. And if you get on this one, it'll strengthen that part of your body, maybe the legs. Or if you get on this one, which I really need to spend a lot of time. That'll get rid of this thing. But again, it's it's uh, how God speaks to us in, in different ways. And I'm uh, as I looked at those tags and said, "If you do this, this will happen." And brought me to the scripture verses today uh, from First Corinthians twelve, twelve through twenty seven. And I believe the message today will help us uh, to not only examine our relationship with Jesus Christ, but also in the building up of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is you. It's not the church is, is you. This is a building, but the church is you. You are the body of Christ. And part of being a, a member of the body of Christ, you are called to be uh, a part to take action, to volunteer, to, to help out with the body. I know some people think they don't need to come to church or, or be involved with church to worship God, but they are lacking the understanding, really, of what God has called us as believers to do in our relationship with that body of Christ. God calls each member, if you are a member of the church, God calls each member in Hebrews 10.25. It says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And all the more as we see the day approaching. That day there is with a capital D. Anytime you read in the Bible and see a capital, that means pay attention. That's when Christ is coming back for all those who are trusting in him. And I pray that you are trusting in him today because that day is going to be a day that you'll either be in heaven or in destruction. In 2 Corinthians, Paul's writing to the Corinthian church as he received word uh, through several sources 
concerning the Christians not staying involved in building up the Corinthian church. Paul was receiving information on the moral deterioration that was happening in the church and the abuse of the Lord's Supper was being abused, false teachings on the resurrection. Paul was personally concerned with the church problems, and that's why he was speaking to them today, revealing a pastor's heart. And just as your pastor, Ron, uh, shares with you, he has a, a heart of God to share with you the love of God, his calling here. He, he's called here to serve you, but also to share the gospel with you. In the chapter, Paul uses an illustration on the physical body uh, to drive home really the importance that every single person has a vital role to play in this body of Christ, in your church. God has a specific uh, purpose for you to carry out. And I, I li like your, uh, where was it? I saw your re connection cards here. That's great. That's what you guys should be doing. You know, you have visitors coming or maybe someone has moved into town and coming into church. Here's some things that maybe I could be involved with. That's great. That's building up the body of Christ. Just like every machine that I'm on down there, it's building my body up. So here's a question for you today. Should my faith in Christ and my relationship with him affect if I come to church? And if I come, what purpose in using my gifts does he have for me in building up Grace Church? Dr. Robert Jeffers in devotional the other day had the title of his devotion was Your Presence Makes a Difference. Have you ever walked into a church that's two-thirds empty? Did it make you want to come back? The only way you can encourage each other and motivate each other in the unity of Christ is to be together in building up a church. When you are not present in church, there is one less voice praising God in song, one less person exercising their spiritual gift to encourage each other. There is one less person sitting underneath the teaching of God's word and be able to encourage others who do not know Christ. Not being in unity impacts this body of Christ, your church. So your presence makes a difference not only in your life, but in the making a difference in Grace Church. So let's begin uh, <clears throat> in these verses. And with each point, I've got four points, and I'll read the verses after I do the point. And it's I'm kind of talking in first person, you know, to myself, too. Uh, as Pastor Ron, we, we probably get more out of it than you do but it's the way that God speaks through us that we can share with you today about ta talking personally sometimes about ourselves. And let, I said, let's begin with verses 12 through 13. It says, the body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts and though all parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were baptized by one spirit into one body whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. So my first point is I need to actively encourage unity within the body of Christ. Paul's use in the comparison of the human body and the body of believers, the church, to show his point when we look at the human body, there are many parts that the, for the body to really be able to function properly, and all parts need to work in unity, don't they? I think of your uh, meatball feed up here and your lutefisk feed up here, 
It takes a lot of work and organization. There has to be unity and people working and helping out in these dinners. And in being in unity, it blesses those who come. I hear about it before. You don't even have to advertise it, just like we never had to advertise our Ludovic feed. It was word of mouth. When this date came, they were there. So it's really a ministry that grace has. Paul explained to the church body that all of the Corinthian church people needed to be unified and help. The church forms, as it says, one body of which Christ is the head of it. My second point is verses 14 through 20. I need to offer my gifts to God. Now, one body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, this, there are many parts, but only one body. God has arranged parts in your body, hasn't he? Because we're born in the image of God. And so the image that he's trying to talk with the physical part is with the spiritual part too. I need to use my gifts. What happens when one part of the body, physical body, decides to quit? Let's say your eyes start to go bad and your ears quit hearing. My wife would agree with that. Their loss starts to affect the rest of the body, doesn't it? Paul is saying in verse 13, the body can't function if the body were only hands or if it were only eyes or if it was only ears. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If we are God's people and don't use our spiritual gifts to help build up the body of Christ, the same goes. The body of Christ starts to lose, starts to deteriorate. And that's what was happening in the Corinthian church with the morals and with the Lord's suppers and things. Those things were starting to deteriorate because people were listening to false teachers and some were not attending as they should. So they weren't learning. It's the same way with what if grace... People don't show up to help with the dinners. Probably wouldn't have any dinner again, would you? It'd be pretty hard for maybe one or two people to put a dinner on, but it takes all of you. And I think these verses from Ecclesiastes would really support what I'm trying to say to do today, too. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. And if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three is not easily broken. You hear that a lot in marriage ceremonies, don't you? And it's great verses there. There to pick one another. Two is better than one. Two is better in a marriage, in a marriage to encourage each other, to forgive one another, and to help one another. <clears throat> and I think as, as uh, 
you know, this a farming community like, like Bruce is, I come from a farming community in Sinai, it was all, all farming pretty much. And when there was a health issue, well, I'll tell you, people came, their friends and, and neighbors came in to help to, to plant the seed or to harvest the grain and things. And that was what the body of Christ does. They help each other. I think of <clears throat> also, too, with the storms that, that we had in Sioux Falls and that you guys had here, they're pretty widespread. There was a lot of volunteers out there helping their neighbors or maybe helping those who they didn't even know, but wanting and willing to help out. Let me tell you something, Grace Free Church members. Every last one of you is important to your church. No matter what your gifts are, you are important. And I'm sure that Pastor Ron would ditto the statement. Paul is reminding the Corinthian church, whatever gift you may have, we need it. It takes a variety of these gifts for the body of Christ to operate and function. Which brings me to the next point. I need to see value in everyone. Verses 21 through 25. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our perishable, <clears throat> presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given great honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the church, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. A story goes, they built a new church building, and people came from far and wide to see it. They admired its beauty. Up on the roof, a little nail heard the people praising everything about the, the lovely structure except the nail. No one ever knew he was there, and he became angry and jealous. If I am that insignificant, nobody will miss me. I'm going to quit. So the nail released its hold, slid down the roof, and fell into the mud. That night it rained and rained. Soon the shingle had, that had no nail blew away, and the roof began to leak. The water streaked the walls and the beautiful murals. The plaster began to fall, the carpet was stained, and the pulpit Bible was ruined by water. All this because one little nail decided to quit. But what of the nail? While holding the shingle, it couldn't be seen, but it was very useful. It was useful in holding that shingle on. Buried in the mud, the nail was useless and would soon be eaten up by rust. The moral of the story, every member is important to the church. You may, like the nail, feel not needed, or your gifts aren't that much at times, but just like the nail, your absence is felt. When you are not present at worship, and the body of Christ hurts, we all are part of God's ministry. We are all an important nail. Paul was telling the Corinthian church in verse 5, there should be no division in the church, but that all the people should have equal concern for one another. Paul was saying that God had arranged the different Christians in the body of Christ to exercise the different spiritual gifts. That's why in the workout center, there's different machines to work on for different parts of the body. And that's what Paul is saying. 
We need to exercise each one of us using our gifts within the body of Christ. God's method of diversity creates unity in the church body. All the nails are important to this congregation. All of you are important to Grace Free. Fourthly, I need to show concern for others. Verses 26 through 27. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. In the body of Christ, if one suffers, all members suffer. Think of your physical again. If you have the flu or the bad cold or a virus of some kind, the body suffers, doesn't it? So thankful for our family. Is so thankful for all of those of you who uh, are, just came around, uh, Rick and Chris and Chad, during the loss of Deb and your prayers and, and during that loss. A really unexpected loss, a shock uh, to us and, and I'm sure to the community. But you're stopping by and and uh, just being encouraging them, maybe bringing some food or goodies to them, just showing up to show your support and maybe a hug of the loss of one of your members. But it wasn't just members of Grace Free either. It was a wonderful community, farming community spirit that showed the concern to the part of the body that was suffering and the loss of a wife, a mom, a grandma, a friend, and too many. I'd like to end with now Paul's application about the nature of the body of Christ comes to an end. Now the Corinthians and us need to apply these teachings to our lives. We are all a part of the body of Christ, Grace Lutheran here. Really, Worldwide, if you're a, a Christian, you are part of the body of Christ. So I need to encourage. I need to offer my gifts. I need to see value in the nails. I need to show more compassion for the others. These are my four, four points. But most of all, the point I want to share with you today is, are you part of the body of Christ as a whole? Do you know the Lord is your personal Savior? Have you come to a, a knowledge of knowing that you are a sinner? We are a sinner. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But have you come to the cross? The blood of Calvary is still flowing for you and for me. I thank you again for the opportunity to be able to, to share and speak about the, the body of church. Sometimes we need to, to look at ourselves and see what we're doing within the church. Are we really active? Are we really doing things? Am I really losing my gifts that God has given me? I pray that you would today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for the body of Christ as a whole. The Lord, you came to this earth. God, you sent your one and only Son to die for us, that we might have forgiveness, that we might have eternal life. I pray, Lord, if, if someone has been touched by your spirit today, maybe someone who's sitting outside the church and just haven't really committed to Christ, that, Lord, you would bring them peace, Help them to understand that you're there for them. Help them to understand that, Lord, eternity is forever. Help them to understand their need for you in their lives. I thank you again, Lord, for this day. In thy name we pray. Amen.
the closing hymn is, We have a story to tell to the nations. Shall we stand? You got the benediction from 1 Peter 4, 9 through 11. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully and administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Shall we say the, the Lord's Prayer? 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.